Imagine being trapped in your own body. Imagine having an itch, but your arms won't move to scratch it. Your mouth won't move to ask someone to scratch it for you. You just have to wait for it to pass. Imagine being trapped inside a rigid shell of a body, but your mind remains as sharp as ever. This is MND. MND, ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, is a fatal, rapidly progressing, muscular degenerative disease that affects the entire body. Each day, six people are diagnosed and six people die from MND. One in every 300 people will have MND, but one in two people will have cancer. MND kills a third of people within their first year of diagnosis. There is no cure. In December 2016, my father, Peter, was diagnosed with this illness. At the moment, he is in the final stages of his life, which means he is fully paralyzed, relies on a ventilator and tracheostomy to breathe, as well as a peg feeding tube to receive nutrients and medication. Being fully paralyzed means he is unable to speak or even to move his eyes to read. He needs 24-hour care. MND is one of the most expensive diseases to have. It can destroy families financially. It takes both a mental and physical toll on the carers and loved ones of the patient. We often take for granted that our body is capable of performing the simplest of movements. Be careful not to take anything for granted. You don't know what you have until you lose it. It happened very gradually. I first noticed that there was sort of a slur in his speech. But I didn't think anything of it. I thought maybe something wrong with his tonsils or you, you don't yeah. think anything. So the slurring of the speech and then... Clearing his throat a lot on the phone. Yeah, and then he, for example, came home. Um, he used to do a lot of site visits, and obviously during summer you are hot drinking a lot of water. And he used to come home and he said to me, I don't know what it is, but I just can't open the water bo um, bottle. And I had to ask my colleagues to open the water. So I just don't understand what's happening to my hands. Yeah, this um, says you had no idea. And we had no idea. And Peter's running the Dubai Marathon, doing um, CrossFit. Um, running every single morning, I don't know how many kilometers a day. So he was super, super, super fit. So you don't even think anything is gonna be so serious. And then we went to the Maldives because he likes to dive. And then he did um, his first dive and he said, um, I had to come up much sooner because I felt like I, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, there was an air in my lungs. I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And then slowly, if you now think back, those were the first signs etc and then the first noticeable sign for us was when Peter's arms were fasciculating so they were continuously jumping and I said to him why is your arms like that and he was like, I don't know and then that's when I said okay I think we need to see a neurologist um, and that's how the whole journey started so he was diagnosed almost within the first um, session with a doctor, with a so neurologist. The, the neurologist knew he already picked away. up and he said, I think it could be ALS and then, or MND, and we were just like, what? So in the beginning, that was like a shock. It was like, we literally cried every single day. We would cry now, but then be fine, and then cry now, and we'll be fine. So that, that took a long while for us to sort of get to that understanding of what is going to happen. And then as you educate yourself more on the disease, it gets more frightening because like, oh my gosh, he's going to need a ventilator or he's going to need feeding or he can't talk, he can't do this, he can't blink his eyes. So that is all very, when you read all of that and you know that that's going to happen. And we've been doing this for eight years. So for me, it feels like sometimes I say to people, it feels like we live in a bubble. Before and after. You have the before, Peter was sick, and then the bubble in which we are living. And that bubble sometimes feel like one year, but then if I look at it, it's, oh gosh, it's we're going into our eighth year with this. Um, and then obviously the life that is going to then change when Peter passes, because we know that that's going to happen. We can't, we know that's a fact. It's a incurable disease that's going to happen. So then I worry about our lives and then I worry about is he going to be okay when that time comes. So. You have these three areas.